Long time no see. How have you been lately? Are you doing well? Oh, it's Dina. I mean, it's just that... It's, um... It's rare for you to reach out to me. What are you talking about? You're my dear sister-in-law. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Actually, I contacted you because there's something I want to tell you. Me? What is it? Well, you see, I'm getting married soon. Oh, really? That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. So here's the thing. I'm planning to have the wedding ceremony next month. That's why I really want you to come, too. So, you contacted me to invite me to the wedding? Exactly. I'm really delighted. I would love to attend, for sure. I'm so happy. I can't wait for everyone to see me in my wedding dress. Um, actually, I was honestly surprised. What about? That I'm getting married? No, not that. It's just that you didn't seem to like me very much, right? When your brother and I got married, you didn't seem convinced. Ah, that's what you mean. I'm really sorry for everything until now. Huh? I said a lot of terrible things to you, didn't I? Uh-huh. You are the marriage partner chosen by my beloved older brother. You're a wonderful person, after all. I've caused you so much trouble. I'm sure I made you feel uncomfortable many times. I haven't grown up at all. I can't believe that the day would come when I'd hear such words from you. It's unbelievable. I truly feel like such a fool. I wish I could go back and tell my past self. I thought you continued to dislike me. I'm so happy to be invited to your wedding like this. Given everything that happened, I thought we would never understand each other. I'm truly sorry. Hearing you say that makes me feel relieved, too. I'm glad we can talk like this again. I'm looking forward to receiving the invitation. Let's meet in person again and talk a lot. Yes, of course. I'll send the invitation again. Oh, by the way, is something wrong? Is my brother currently on an overseas assignment? If it's Monty, then yes. He's currently abroad for work. I see. Do you think my brother will be able to come to my wedding? I believe he will definitely come. However, his schedule might be very tight. That's true. I think he will return on the day of the wedding and head straight to the venue from the airport. Do you already have a set time for the ceremony? It's scheduled to start at 1 p.m. Do you think he'll make it on time? If that's the case... I think it should be fine. Really? That's great! I'll ask him directly, but I remember him saying that work would settle down on the evening before. You really love your brother, don't you? Yes, I've loved him since we were young. He's kind, handsome, and smart. He's my pride and joy. That's true. He's a wonderful husband to me, too. Exactly. You're really lucky to be married to my brother. I see. Oh, if my brother is coming directly from the airport to the wedding venue, I'll arrange a taxi. A taxi? He must be tired from work.
and I'll arrange a separate taxi for you, too. Separate taxis for my husband and me? Don't worry about it. It's fine. Well, maybe for my husband, but I can go on my own. It's fine. Don't hesitate. Of course, I'll cover the taxi expenses, too. Really? That's too kind of you. You must be busy with wedding preparations, right? Well, I'm quite busy, and things are a bit hectic, but I'm okay. Besides, weddings can be quite expensive, right? If we add taxi fares to that, it could become a burden. I'll take care of my own expenses, so don't worry, okay? That's what I want to do. Huh? What do you mean? I've caused you a lot of trouble in the past, haven't I? I've done many unpleasant things, too. Dina? That's why I want to make it up to you. Making it up to me? It may not be enough like this, but at least as a gesture of apology. Could you please ride the taxi I arranged? Please, I'm begging you. I understand. If you insist to that extent, I'll accept your offer. Yes. I truly appreciate your thoughtfulness. I'm so happy that your feelings have changed and we can have this conversation. Me too. Well then, let's meet again at the wedding. I'm really looking forward to it. Two hours later... Good job. How's work going? Hey, Aunt Sonia. Work is going smoothly. That's really good to hear. I imagine being stationed abroad must be tough. Well, to some extent. But since I understand the language, it hasn't been too much of a hindrance to my work. There are times when I feel perplexed by the cultural differences. I truly think you're amazing. Ha <laughs> ha I'm really not that amazing. It's just that now I'm being entrusted with much more responsibility at work. It's challenging, but I find it fulfilling. You are a hardworking and admirable person, but please don't push yourself too hard. Thank you. It's not a distance that I can't cover in a few hours. Once things settle down with my current work, I want to come back and see you. Of course. I'll be waiting any time. By the way, did you contact me because you needed something? That's right. Actually, something surprising happened earlier. Surprising? It's rare to see you so excited. What happened? It's not bad news, is it? No, it's really good news. I might be able to get along with your sister, Dina. What? Really? I can't believe it. What happened? She contacted me earlier. I see. She said she wants to invite me to her upcoming wedding. Did she reach out to you herself? Yes. I thought it might be some kind of mistake. I don't know why. But my sister has always treated you quite coldly. She put you through a lot of hardship. It's true. She said and did hurtful things to me. But you know what? She told me she wants to apologize for everything that happened. That's quite surprising. Yes, it is. And that's not all. She said they will arrange a pickup taxi, not just for you, but also for me. What did you say? She said they will cover the expenses, too. I wonder what's going on. I don't know. I told her that I can take care of at least that expense myself, but she insisted on making it up to me. I can't believe she would go to such lengths. Honestly, I thought she was a different person. It's understandable. Her behavior towards you has been terrible all this time. 
Indeed, there have been many sad moments. Do you remember what happened when we went to your house for a family gathering? Oh yeah, I remember. At that time, only your meal wasn't prepared. Yes, it was Dina who was responsible for the meal preparations. That's right, and she didn't even apologize to you. I remember she suggested you should eat outside instead. Yeah, that's right. I couldn't bear it anymore. I ran out of the house as she told me to, and you came with me. Of course I did. In the end, we ended up having dinner together that night. That's right. And when we returned home, she was waiting there again. She said, Your family isn't wealthy. They're from a poor household. I was shocked the moment that I heard that. They said, You were born into a poor family, so you couldn't even go to college. And then they said, A low-educated and disgraceful woman like you is not worthy of my brother. It's truly unforgivable. It was shocking to hear such things from my own sister. You immediately stood up for me and confronted her. Of course. She said things that should never be said to anyone. But despite showing some remorse in the moment, there was no real improvement. When you scolded her, she would temporarily calm down. But the next day, she would do the same thing again. This time, she did it when you weren't around. Even when I reprimanded her, she would just evade and claim she never said or did such things. Even if she apologized, it was just empty words. It was painful to be insulted not only about myself, but also about my family and parents. I'm truly sorry. Perhaps I spoiled her too much. No, it's fine. After all, she has truly repented. Yeah. From what I've heard, it seems like she genuinely regrets her actions. Honestly, I'm relieved too. Maybe she was just sad about losing her beloved brother to me. Well, it's really embarrassing to admit. But my sister just loves me, and she's not such a bad person after all. Yes, right now I can believe those words. I also want to get along with your family. I believe that deep down she's a good person. Thank you for believing in my sister. I'll be a little busy with work until the day of the wedding. I understand. Good luck with your work. Thank you. It seems like I'll be able to take a break after the wedding. It's been a while since I could relax and take it easy. Really? I'm so happy. I'll prepare your favorite things. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm excited for my sister's wedding and to see you. Well, I'll contact you again. Yes, take care and come back safely. On the wedding day. Hey, there's something I want to ask you. I know the wedding is about to start, so I understand if you're busy. But could you please reply to this message somehow? Oh, what's wrong? The wedding is about to start, and I don't see you around. I came to the venue as stated on the invitation you gave me. What's the matter? I asked one of the staff members as they said there's no wedding scheduled for today. Did I make a mistake with the location? I'm truly sorry. Oh, that's what it is. Huh? What do you mean by that? What are you talking about? I am sorry to bother you while you're busy, but could you send me the address of the venue again in a message? <laughs> What's up? Why are you laughing? It's just so funny. Huh? You fell for it completely. <laughs> fell for 
what? I don't understand the meaning. It's too funny. I can't stop laughing. You're such a fool. I don't understand. Please explain it properly. There's no way I would have a wedding in such a small church. And in some old countryside place. Huh? Isn't this the place? Seriously, it's so easy to deceive ignorant fools. <laughs> Are you seriously saying that you wrote a false location on the invitation? Of course I did. Why should I invite someone like you to my wedding? It's already unpleasant enough that my brother married a low-class person like you. Why would you do something so cruel? I trusted you. The problem is not with your capabilities, is it? Were all your words the other day just lies? I was so happy. I genuinely believed that we could get along and was thrilled from the bottom of my heart. Did you really think so? You're a true idiot. Why should I be friends with someone like you? Stupidity rubs off, you know. Why do you do such terrible things? What is it about me that you dislike so much? It's because I despise you. Who willingly married my beloved and accomplished brother? Even the invitation was a lie, just like everything I said the other day. It made me feel uncomfortable, even though I knew it was all lies to deceive you. I can't bear to apologize to you. This is going too far. Seriously. Playing with my conscience like this? It's unforgivable as a human being. Don't lecture me with your stupidity. Everything you say is just unpleasant. What did you say? My brother is a perfect person, except for his poor judgment in women. It's truly pitiful that he ended up marrying such a stupid woman like you. I won't tolerate any further insults. You're a fool for falling into such a simple trap. You're really not deserving of my brother. We needed to separate you two as soon as we could. What did you say? There's a reason why I invited only you to a different location this time. Reason? My brother should be arriving at this venue soon. Once he's here, while you're not around... I'll convince him to leave you. What are you saying? Even if you do that, he won't agree to it. You should stop this nonsense. It's not nonsense. For me, it's really important that my brother and you break up. Do your parents even know about this? What do you mean by this? That I'm being brought to a separate venue. I don't know, because I didn't say anything. I see, of course. I can't tell such an absurd thing to my parents. They would be devastated if they found out. Huh? In the first place, I didn't want to invite you to this wedding. But my parents opposed it. They said we had to invite you. Of course, because I'm your brother's wife. It's customary to invite family members in such situations. Besides, our parents have a good relationship. That's it. That's something I really can't understand. Why is that? For some reason, our parents seem to like incompetent women like you. It's infuriating. Both of our parents are very kind people. It's just you. You're the one who's biased against me based on social status and education. You're so annoying. Don't act so high and mighty. Hey, you should calm down and think about what you're doing. I told you to shut up, didn't I? 
Do idiots like you even understand words? Today, while you're not here, I'll talk to my parents about you. What are you going to tell them? I'm going to tell them how much of a terrible woman you are and how you're not suitable for my brother. I haven't done anything that would make me feel guilty or ashamed. <clears throat> we'll see about that. I'll definitely convince our parents and make them see the truth. How could this happen? It's really awful. I was looking forward to this day. Thanks to you falling for it completely. It's going to be a joyful day for me. Seriously, serves you right. It's not too late, even now. Please tell me the real location of the venue. Uh-huh. If we hurry now, we might make it to the ceremony in time. <laughs> what are you talking about? There's no way you can make it to the venue. That takes five hours from here, no matter how hard you try. Huh? Is it really that far? Yes. It's a very luxurious and beautiful church. I see. I hate you with all my heart. I hope you never appear in front of me again. I see. I was disliked to that extent. It's really sad. Oh well, so what? It makes me want to cry. To be treated like this by my husband's sister? Just separate from my brother already. You're a nuisance. You don't even care if you make someone sad and cry, do you? What are you talking about? I don't have any sympathy for someone I hate like you. Just stay there and cry alone for the rest of your life, okay? Huh? I'm not alone. Huh? What do you mean by saying such incomprehensible things? I'm not alone. Lazarus is right here, standing beside me. Huh? Hold on a second. Stop saying things that make no sense. What? First of all, how do you know Lazarus? Lazarus is my husband-to-be, the groom. I never told you his name. Even if you ask why, he is here right now. What do you mean? When I arrived at this venue, he was already here. It seems like he arrived an hour ago. But when he realized there was no schedule for the ceremony, he seemed confused, too. But why would the groom be there with you? Why did it turn out like this? He waited at the venue for an hour, crying, because there was no ceremony and he couldn't reach you. We greeted each other because he was invited to your wedding. Wait a minute. I just confirmed with the staff that the groom hasn't arrived yet. Are you really saying he's there with you? If you don't believe it, should I take his place? Three minutes later. Hey, what's going on? It's me, Dina. Why are you over there? I saw the address written on the invitation, and it came here. If that's the case, you shouldn't have made a mistake. I've been really busy with work lately, so I left all the wedding preparations to you, right? That's true, but... I was so busy that I didn't even have time to sleep, so I had no idea about the details of the ceremony. That's right, isn't it? You've been absent from home due to work for a long time. Yeah. So... When the wedding day was approaching, I finally came home after a long time. I wanted to ask you about the wedding. Like the time, location, things to prepare. You were home at that time? You were gone for so long. When I came home, you were peacefully asleep. Since you were taking care of everything for the wedding, and I thought you must be tired, I didn't want to disturb you, so I left you sleeping. 
And then it was an invitation on the desk, which was about to be sent. I checked the location of the venue based on that. What are you saying? I confirmed the venue the day before the wedding. Did you really know the location of the venue? Yeah, I knew it. I thought the location written on the invitation was the venue, right? That was a fake invitation with a false address meant for Ansonia. Don't make judgments. You looked at it without permission. There's no way anyone would know that. What is going on? This can't be happening. The groom not being at the wedding venue. I saw your conversation with Ansonia just now. You were so focused on harassing her that you didn't even realize I hadn't arrived at the venue. Well, well it couldn't be helped. She deserved to be punished. On our celebratory day, this is how you treat people with such terrible harassment? It's none of your business. Don't interfere. None of my business. It's our wedding, isn't it? Because of you doing this to your sister-in-law, things have turned into a mess. What are you planning to do about the ceremony today? To begin with, it's impossible to have a wedding with such a tightly packed schedule. Huh? What are you saying now? And it's not just about the schedule. What do you mean? We also talked about wanting children, didn't we? So what? You mentioned wanting to live in a newly built apartment near the station. You said that was fine, too. Yeah, I said it. I thought it would make you happy. Well, that's fine, isn't it? But if we do this and that, it will incur expenses. That's why we agreed to have the wedding nearby instead. It's far from me, too, and not to mention the transportation costs. That's true, but... We discussed and decided on these things together, and I entrusted the preparations to you. But this place was what I liked. It's really unfortunate that things turned out like this. I trusted you. Wait a minute! Lazarus! This conversation isn't over yet! Immediately following... Hey! Calm down. He seems completely worn out and doesn't have the energy to talk anymore. How could you do this to him? What? It's because of you that he's like this. On the day he confirmed the location of the venue through the invitation, he seemed really happy to find out it was at a nearby venue. It seems like you didn't agree on the choice of the venue. Exactly. I wanted a luxurious and beautiful venue, even if it was far away, but he insisted on a small church nearby. When he found out the location of the venue, he probably thought that you finally respected his wishes. He didn't know it was a false location. It's his fault for snooping and jumping to conclusions. Snooping? What do you mean? There's nothing wrong with looking at your own wedding invitation, right? Oh, for heaven's sake, what are we going to do? The wedding has already started. Everyone is panicking because the groom hasn't arrived yet, and we can't reach him. It takes five hours from here, right? It's impossible for him to make it in time if he leaves now. Then what are we supposed to do? You might have to proceed without the groom and do a video call or something. Ugh! What do you think we've been preparing the venue for? This is unbelievable! I don't appreciate being told that by you. It's all because of you. This is all your fault. It's not my fault, no matter how you look at it. There's nothing we can do about it. You'll have to handle it on your own. Hey! One hour later... I arrived at the venue earlier and talked to my sister about the situation. 
and Sonia. I'm truly sorry. Once again, my sister has done something outrageous to you. You don't need to apologize. It's her fault. No, I really have no words to say. What's happening there right now? If the groom is not there, I don't think the wedding can proceed. The wedding has been canceled. Dina is in a terrible state, completely losing control. She's lashing out and causing a chaotic situation. I can imagine. When she contacted me, she seemed quite distraught as well. Let's not worry about my sister. It's her own doing. Are you okay? How are you doing now? I took a taxi with Lazarus and went back home. I was also feeling hungry, so we went out to have a meal together. I see. Did he say anything? I told him about the situation between me and Dina. And then he opened up to me, saying he wanted to reconsider marrying Dina. I see. Well, it's only natural. I feel a bit hesitant to speak ill of your sister. Don't worry about it. Please, don't let it bother you. It seems that ever since the wedding was decided, she has been using Lazarus's money to buy various things on her own. She was splurging on luxury brand items and furniture with his money. And what's more, she was bragging about it to people around her. What the hell? I knew she had a tendency to show off, but I didn't expect it to be that extreme. It seems she completely ignored our discussions about saving for the future. I see. Ah, that's why she's so distraught. Is she really that upset? I think after talking to you, he contacted Dina. Probably to express his desire to reconsider the marriage. It could be the timing, indeed. It seems Dina can't get in touch with Lazarus right now. She's feeling devastated, thinking her life is over, and she's in a state of despair. I truly feel sorry for what she has done. Despite it being my sister's actions, please let me apologize to our parents again. And then, I need to go and apologize to Lazarus as well. I'll accompany you when the time comes. One week later. Hey, listen. Respond to me. What is it? I want to borrow some money. Huh? That's right. I'm asking you to lend me money. Why? The wedding we canceled the other day incurred cancellation fees. The amount is significant and I can't pay it all at once. I see. But why are you asking me? How about asking your beloved and kind brother? I did ask him. But neither our parents nor my brother will lend me the money. On top of that, they told me not to show my face. Oh, why is that? My brother is extremely angry, especially with me. He said he doesn't have a sister anymore, completely cutting ties. I understand. When he thought you had changed, he was really happy. Moreover, because of you, he went around apologizing to me and Lazarus on your behalf since you didn't apologize. Still, saying he's cutting ties is going too far, no matter what. Just because we're siblings doesn't mean everything is fair game, whether as a joke or not. I think he's serious, not joking. You did something incredibly outrageous. What are you talking about? That was just a little prank. Do you think something like that can be brushed off as a prank? If you hadn't become my brother's wife, this wouldn't have happened. It's your fault. Take responsibility for it. You seriously hurt your fiancé in this incident. Isn't that the bigger issue here? That man, he's just busy and doesn't earn much. I'm the one rejecting him. He's actually successful in his work and is planning to start a new company. 
What? I haven't heard anything like that. That's what he told me. You were only interested in money and never asked about his work. That's why I didn't think of discussing his job with you. So I never knew about his business. That's... So he was busy because of the company establishment? He had a lot to do with setting up the company, I suppose. I want to make things right with him somehow. You can still contact him, right? Help us reconcile. <sighs> He's very hardworking and an excellent person. I'll be straightforward. But you're not suitable to be his wife. What are you saying? Stop clinging to him any further and quietly step back. You should withdraw gracefully. How annoying. I told you not to lecture me. You should do as I say. Do you think you can ask to borrow money with that attitude? Hey, hey, I was wrong, okay? I'm your adorable sister-in-law and am in such trouble. Let's just get along after all. No way. It's too late to suddenly change your tune. What? You were saying how much you wanted to get along with me. You know, first of all, even if I hypothetically wanted to get along with you, it's impossible now, you know? Why is that? It's what my husband told me. He said he severed ties with you, so I shouldn't have any contact with you either. My brother said something like that? Yes, he did. That's unbelievable. I thought cutting ties between siblings was just a joke. Even I wanted to get along with you because you're someone my loved one cares about. If that's the case... But you see, you're no longer family. That's why I can't bring myself to want to get along. Hey, wait! Of course, I can't lend money to a stranger. Good luck with your efforts to gather money. Please help me out. Hey, reply to me. Thereafter. Afterwards, she took on debt to pay for the cancellation fee of the wedding. She was cut off from our conscience and was forbidden from contacting her beloved brother, whom she adored. However, she probably thought that if he was a kind brother, he would eventually forgive her for everything. Breaking the prohibition, she persistently tried to regain the relationship multiple times. My husband, Monty, replaced his smartphone, and I decided to accompany him on an overseas assignment completely severing ties with my sister-in-law. Her former fiancé, Lazarus, also had his company grow steadily, and it seems he has met another wonderful woman now. Dina seems to be working tirelessly day and night to repay her debts. She laments her current situation of having no one to rely on and feeling left behind in happiness. I heard that she spends her days in tears of frustration, wondering how it all came to this. But it's her own doing, after all. I'm sorry, Jane. What's going on, Eric? Why are you apologizing? I have to go on a business trip suddenly again. What? Again? When is it? I have to go on a business trip this weekend, too. I'm sorry. What? This weekend? I'm really sorry. What? Again? Why do you have to go on a business trip suddenly? Yes, that's right. Lately, I've had a lot of sudden business trips. You went on a business trip last month, too. Yes, that's true, but I can't help it. Have you been going on a lot of business trips lately? Yeah, but there have been a lot of business trips recently but it's work, so there's nothing we can do about it. I understand it's work, but can't you find out about the business trips earlier? The business trip schedule is always too sudden and it's troublesome. 
Yeah, that's true. It would be better if I could find out a little earlier, but with work, there's nothing I can do about it. But you promised to watch the kids this weekend while I go out with my friends, remember? Oh, was it this weekend? Yes, did you forget my plans? That's right, I did. We had plans, but suddenly I have to go on a business trip. I'm really sorry. I'll have to cancel my plans with my friends again. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I understand that there's nothing we can do about it, but... It's just cancelling plans with your friends, isn't it? It's not a big deal, right? What? Don't talk like that. I was looking forward to this day too, you know. And because of your sudden changes in plans, I've had to cancel plans with my friends about five times recently. Even if you say that, I have a job, so there's nothing I can do about it. Just because you have a job doesn't mean you're so important, right? I'm not saying I'm important or anything like that. Then what are you saying? You're a housewife, so if you have free time instead of playing around, why don't you do some cleaning or something? What kind of attitude is that? It's not very nice, you know. I'm not the one deciding on these business trips, so it's no use complaining to me. Just because I'm a housewife, you're saying I'm slacking off on cleaning? That's not what I meant. Then what did you mean? I meant that since housewives have free time, you can go hang out with your friends anytime, not just this weekend. What? You think housewives have free time? It's easier for you to make plans than it is for me. I'm not a housewife because I like having nothing to do. I don't like working every day either. And just because I'm a housewife, it doesn't mean I have plenty of free time. I'm busy every day with lots of things to do. Please stop saying that housewives have nothing to do. I work for you guys too. I'm busy too. I do the housework for the sake of my family too. I understand that. And being a housewife isn't just about cleaning. I know that. I was just giving an example. That way of talking makes me angry. You don't have to talk to me like that. You make it sound like I'm always hanging out with my friends and not doing any cleaning because I'm a housewife. But you have no right to say that to me. I do all the housework properly, don't I? You're not even working, so cleaning is a given. That's what you think. How low. Don't act so high and mighty. Don't make fun of housewives, okay? I'm not making fun of anyone. Housewives are busy too. Where? If you have time to go out and play. I wouldn't have that time if you weren't taking care of the kids. I'm busy with work. You always talk about work, but as a housewife, I'm just as busy as a salaried worker. I do household chores every day without a day off for a whole year. That's true, but you have a lot of free time, don't you? I'm talking about having time alone. Actually, being a housewife is much busier than you think. That's not true. Don't make me laugh. Anyway, if you don't watch the kids, I can't have any time alone. You understand that, right? Yeah, I understand. But I can't this weekend because of work. I understand this weekend, but can you watch the kids on your next day off? Sometimes I need time alone. It can't be helped because it's a business trip. I know. I'm asking you on your day off. Oh, I see. Anyway, why don't you take the kids to the park this weekend? I want a change of mood, too. Of course I spend quality time with the children and plan to enjoy going to the park, but I just want to have some time to hang out with my friends occasionally and take a break. Being a housewife means you have mostly alone time, right? You don't really understand anything. Whatever, forget it. Anyway, don't complain so much. What do you mean, don't complain so much? Am I not allowed to express my true feelings to you? That's not what I mean, but... You also complain about your work, don't you? Yeah, there are various things at work every day, so I want to complain about them sometimes. Even as a housewife, I spend my days being chased by time. I really don't have any time alone. The mental burden of working and being a housewife is completely different. What do you mean? It sounds like you're belittling housewives. I'm not belittling anyone. Of course, I also complain about work, but you're just relaxing at home, doing the cleaning, shopping, and taking care of the kids, right? You just want to say that you're always the busiest one because of work don't you? But you don't have to deal with any mental exhaustion from being a homemaker, do you? It's true that work might cause more mental fatigue, but does that mean I can't get some alone time too? This time, I have to go on a business trip, so cancel your plans with your friends. Otherwise, who will take care of the kids? You're the only one here, aren't you? I don't agree with your words and thoughts, but anyway, I'll cancel my plans for this weekend. But I need some alone time and a change of mood too. Can you understand that feeling? Yes, I understand. Let's do it when I'm not on a business trip again. Ah, but didn't your mother say that she would take care of the children? Yeah, she did say that, but I don't want to inconvenience her. 
But my mother-in-law, Helen, told me herself. Told you what? That she'll take care of the kids so that I can refresh myself. I don't think that's her true intention. Don't you understand even that much? Are you sure about that? Your mother has raised children, so she should understand my feelings, right? Anyway, you'll have to take care of the kids that day. Why? Can't we ask your mother to do it? Taking care of your own children is your responsibility, isn't it? Give up on it this time. Why not? Can't we just take advantage of your mother's offer? Anyway, taking care of the children is your responsibility. Oh, come on. Why are you so stubborn? If you don't want me to ask your mother directly, then why don't you try asking her yourself, please? Anyway, on that day, you and the children will stay at home. Why? You're such an inflexible man. Fine, I got it. It doesn't matter anymore. Weekend. Eric! What's up, Jane? Where are you right now? I told you, I'm at work. Are you really at work? Yeah, I'm on a business trip. What's going on? Do you enjoy leaving me and our child to have fun on your business trips? What are you talking about? Leaving you guys to have fun on my business trips? What a terrible person you are. You say you're on a business trip, but you're actually playing around. Meanwhile, as a housewife, I'm left to take care of our child at home. I'm telling you, I'm really on a business trip. I'm not playing around. I'm working, you know. Oh, really? As a housewife, I'm just following your orders and taking care of our child while you're away. What is your point? Do you have something to say? Actually, I received a call from your company. What? From the company? Yes, from your company. Why did the company call you? What did they say? They were worried something happened to you because you weren't answering the phone, so they called me. Really? I'm on a business trip. The reception is bad, and I'm working. Uh, I didn't notice. Oh, is that so? I thought you didn't answer because you were doing something guilty. Guilty of what? What are you talking about? Are you suspecting me of something? It's too suspicious that you didn't answer the company's phone call. So what did the person from the company say? Did they tell you the reason for the call? Yes, I asked them, of course. What did they say? Sorry to bother you on your day off. There's someone who wants to meet Eric. That's what they said. Someone wants to meet me? I wonder who that could be. More importantly, what do you mean you're on vacation? It's not exactly a vacation. It's a business trip. Then why did someone from the company say you're on vacation? Isn't that strange? I don't know why they said that, but that's just how our company refers to business trips. Is that even a thing? You sound suspicious. What's suspicious about it? There's nothing suspicious. You're just making excuses. I'm not making excuses. It's the truth. But if it's a business trip, you shouldn't say you're on vacation. You're right. Besides, you're working, so it's not a vacation at all. That's true. Anyway, where are you right now? I already told you, I'm on a business trip. What are you doing? I'm working. Obviously, it's for work. Hmm. Are you on a business trip that your co-workers are calling a vacation? You don't understand how the company works because you're a housewife and you've never worked in a company before. Is that so? By the way, where are you on this business trip? Today's business trip is... If you can't tell me where you are, can I ask your co-workers where you're on business trip? Why do you want to know? You don't need to know. Well, can't you at least tell me where you are on your business trip? Please, I'm begging you, don't cause trouble for the company. I won't cause any trouble. I'm counting on you not to. But actually, I already know about your business trip. Huh? What do you mean? Why? You always said you were going on a business trip, but the people at the company told me that you haven't gone on a business trip for the past few years. Can you explain this properly? Well, maybe someone at the company made a mistake and said something wrong. I really came on a business trip. Huh. Then tell me at least where you're on the business trip. Yeah, well, don't ask anything from the people at the company. You can ask me, right? Okay, then I'll ask you. You went on a business trip last month and the month before, right? Yeah, I went on a business trip. Who did you go with? Where did you go on the business trip? Tell me. Ah, uh, the connection's getting bad. Can we continue this conversation when I get home? Are you trying to run away? I'm not trying to run away. It's just that the connection has been bad and I'm having a hard time hearing you. I can hear everything clearly on my end, and I don't think there's any problem with the connection. Anyway, let's continue this conversation when I get home, okay? 
You're trying to run away from an important conversation. I'll talk about the business trip when I get home. You can ask me anything then. Do you even have a home to go back to? What do you mean? Come on, just admit that you're cheating already. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not cheating. You're not cheating. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I'm not cheating, and I really am on a business trip right now. Are you on a vacation cheating trip then? Fine, I'll admit it. But I'm not cheating. I came on a trip with a male friend. How can you come up with lies so easily? It's not a lie. I'm really with a male friend. That's impossible. It's probably a woman, right? It's not a woman. I did say it was a business trip, but it's actually a vacation time. Why do you have to lie like that? I'm exhausted from work every day, too. I just want to relax a little. It's not just you who needs to relax, you know. Don't I have the right to relax with my male friend? Then why do you need to sneak around and lie about it? I thought it would be better to lie and avoid causing trouble. What do you mean by that? You complain about needing alone time, too. But if you knew I was the only one getting to be free, you would complain even more, right? Well, I can't accept that you get to travel and have fun on your own during your vacation. That's why I ended up lying like this. What? Are you trying to say that the reason you lied is because of me? No, it's not like that. Do you have something to hide? That's why you kept it a secret? No, that's not it. That's absolutely not it. Absolutely? Please believe me on this one. Is it really just a male friend that you're traveling with? You even had to lie about it? To me, it seems like you're traveling with a woman. I'm not cheating on you. I know you're the one doing housework all the time and taking care of the children all the time. Really? You made it sound like I was slacking off last time. That's not true. I'm sorry for making it seem like I'm the only one who gets to have fun. That's why I said it like that. If you really feel sorry towards me, would you prioritize the trip with your male friend over us? I didn't have any reason to decline the invitation, so I thought, why not? Do you remember what you told me before? Did I say something? You said that homemakers have a lot of free time on their hands, remember? I didn't mean it like that. And yet today, you try to lift me up and use that as an excuse to justify your behavior. Do you think that makes it okay? I don't think I'll be forgiven. Is that your excuse then? It's not an excuse. I really haven't lied about anything. You're always saying and doing things that are lies. I really did come on a trip with my male friends. Then why didn't you just say that you were going on a trip with your male friends before you left? It's because you keep lying like that, that nobody believes you. If you hadn't said that you wanted your own time, I wouldn't have had to lie and could have gone on this trip. But it's impossible to do that after you say something like that. You lied about going on a business trip, and now you're saying that you're going on a trip with your male friends. It's not just a one-time thing, is it? Yeah. You're the worst. You only think about yourself. Don't I have the right to relieve my stress, too? I didn't say anything about relieving stress. Then what's the problem? I'm saying the problem is your lies, don't you understand? You told someone from your company that you were on a business trip. I believed that you were really working. Without any suspicion, I told them that my husband was away on a business trip. That was my fault. Then I found out that your company doesn't have business trips that frequently. I can't believe I'm feeling so miserable like this. I look like a fool for trusting you. Please believe me. I'm not cheating on you. Really? Please believe me. Is that your excuse? Excuse? Anyway, let's go on a family trip next time. How can you say that? I'm inviting you to a family trip. Aren't you happy about it? If it weren't for this incident, I would have been so happy and excited. See? You're happy, right? But you're just not trustworthy. What do you mean? I'm telling the truth. It's clear that you're lying so easily. Do you still think I'm cheating on you? Yes, I can only think that you're cheating on me. What's wrong? You don't believe anything I say. Yeah, that seems to be the case. Actually, I saw a photo. A photo? What kind of photo? A photo of you with your mistress. What's that? When was it taken? Who showed you that photo? It must be some kind of mistake, right? I also wanted to believe it was a mistake many times, but it wasn't. It was a photo of you and Sophia. That's... I guess that means there's nothing more to say. You're really doing this, aren't you? Why do you have a photo like that? You're lying, aren't you? What good would it do me to lie like this? Who showed you that photo? It was Sophia's husband, the person you're having an affair with. 
Seriously? Are you lying? It's not a lie. How about you just admit that you're having an affair? Do you know Sophia's husband? Do you trust him in that photo more than you trust me? Well, I can trust the photo as evidence more than your lies. Why did Sophia's husband show you that photo? Because I'm your wife, of course. Do you know Sophia's husband? There's no way I know him. Then why? You know that your mistress is married, don't you? Nowadays, you can make all kinds of fake photos using computer software. Can you believe that kind of photo? Is there someone who would bother making a fake photo, showing it to me and doing such a thing? What's the point? Maybe you're being deceived. Sophia is married, right? This photo was shown to me by Sophia's husband. You're really the worst. What can I believe from you when it comes to infidelity? You just keep telling lies, and I have no idea what's true anymore. You suddenly stopped responding to messages. Are you shaken up? I guess so. You didn't think that the affair would be discovered by her husband, did you? Your thoughts are too naive. How about admitting that you're having an affair once and for all? Did you think that this affair would never be revealed? It seems that Sophia's husband, George, has been suspicious of his wife's infidelity for quite some time. But of course, just like you, Sophia didn't tell him the truth, so he's hired a private investigator to investigate it. The evidence is not just the photo I saw, you know. We also know that you and Sophia have been meeting secretly many times. Enough with the lies already. It's pointless. As the investigation progressed, it seems that they found out that your wife is me. Then George contacted me directly and told me about your affair. I never thought for a moment that you were cheating on me, so I was really shocked. But at the same time, I also feel sorry for the other person's family and George. I couldn't help but cry. What kind of feelings do you have when you cheat? Are you happy spending vacations with your mistress? Does your family not matter to you? And you lie so much. I can't believe you as a person. I don't even know what to believe anymore when I'm with you. Sacrificing our child like this? It's impossible to maintain our relationship like this anymore. If you had been honest about your affair earlier, things might have been different. It's impossible now. I can't be with you. I don't feel any meaning in being married to you. Please divorce me. Hey, wait a minute. I don't want a divorce. What? You're always lying. That's all nonsense. What's nonsense? That's really you in this photo. Even George admits that Sophia is your mistress. I have other evidence too. Your lies won't work anymore, you know? I might be in that photo, but are you sure that the guy George is really Sophia's husband? Yes, he is. He's Sophia's husband. How do you know that? Don't believe people so easily. I'm not stupid. I didn't trust him easily. I see. I also checked his identity. I researched whether he and Sophia are married and whether the photo is real. But it was all true. Don't just lie and act like you know better. I'm not acting like I know better. Anyway, let's talk about it with the four of us when we return from the trip tomorrow. Four people? Who with? You, me, your affair partner Sophia, and her husband George. All four of us. Wait a minute. Why four people? Calm down. Let's be calm about it first. Eric, I think you're the one who's the least calm. I'm perfectly calm and composed. First, why don't we talk between you and me? I don't think that's the right way. Why? It's about us, husband and wife, isn't it? Eric, do you know how terrible your actions are? Yeah, I know. It's not just about the two of us anymore, you know? That's why George came to me. Well, that's true. But can't we talk just the two of us first? Talking with four people. You keep lying and hiding the truth. I don't want to go through another miserable experience. I won't lie anymore, I promise. Even if you didn't lie, your mistress might side with George, right? I think it's better to talk all four of us before the conversation gets out of hand. You're having an affair, do you realize that? Honestly, I never imagined it would become such a big deal. That's right, but it's not a level where two of us can solve the problem anymore. I see. Since it has come to this, we need to talk with all four of us. I think it will be faster that way. I never imagined something like this would happen. Anyway, when we come back from the trip tomorrow, I have arranged a place for us to talk. I understand. During that time, we'll be asking your mother to take care of the children. Yes, I understand. You're accepting it easily this time. What else can I do? You were reluctant to leave the children with your mother last time. I can't talk about this kind of thing in front of the children. That's true. I'm glad you're not losing your rationality. I'm sorry for causing trouble. Please tell your mother. 
Yeah, I'm sorry to you too. It's too late. Even if you apologize now, it won't make any difference. You're right. I'm planning to have a lawyer present at tomorrow's discussion. Huh? Is that so? When did you prepare for that? Since George has been consulting with a lawyer about various things, my lawyer has also been arranged by him for me. I see. So tomorrow, the lawyer who knows the details will be present with me. Okay, got it. Well, that's all I wanted to say. Let's discuss the details after tomorrow's trip. Okay. Now that it's come to this, there's probably nothing I can say that would make a difference. I'm really sorry for not admitting to the affair right away. What I did was truly the worst thing. I never thought it would come to this. If you have something you want to say, I'll listen to everything tomorrow. Apologizing now won't change what you did. Yeah. Well, see you tomorrow. After discussion at home. Hey, Jane. What? I want to talk to you about the division of assets. We already decided that in the previous discussion, didn't we? I get 70% of the assets. Yeah, but as an apology for my affair, how about 60%? As I said earlier, I'm not satisfied with that. That's why I contacted you to reconsider. You left all the housework and child rearing to me while you were fooling around, cheating on me. Yes, but even so, I was the one supporting you while you didn't work, you know. Are you reflecting on what you did? Of course I'm reflecting on it. I never thought it would come to this. I still can't believe it. I feel the same way. But think about it carefully. What about? What did you do besides bringing in a paycheck? I worked every day from morning to night for the family. Yes, you worked hard and provided for the family financially. But after work, you just drank and went to sleep. It can't be helped that I was tired from work. And when you had a day off... You lied about going on a business trip and didn't spend time with the kids. You went on a cheating trip with a woman, right? Yeah, but I still have to live life from now on. No matter what you say, I can't give up 70% of our assets. Can't you reconsider somehow? It's impossible, of course. I'm begging you about that. What was our married life for? What do you mean? You were the head of the household, and I was like a housekeeper. That's not true, is it? As a homemaker, I always felt like you looked down on me. I never looked down on you. You were always working and had a higher status, and I've put up with a lot. It's obvious, isn't it? I'm in a position where I have to support my family. Maybe so. From now on, I'll be living and raising these children. I've considered everything, and I can't give up on 70% of the assets. I don't understand. Even if you don't understand, we can talk again with the lawyer involved. I understand. I'm really sorry for what I've done. Thereafter. I was able to successfully divorce Eric. It seems like Sophia, Eric's affair partner, and George have also divorced. I thought Eric and Sophia would get married, but it seems they chose to break up. Sophia didn't seem to have any plans, and she started a difficult job with no clear direction. Furthermore, it seems that Eric had to work with a sense of discomfort after his company found out about his affair. As a result of the divorce, it came to light that Eric had been stealing company property during his affairs and selling it to make ends meet for his travels. So, Eric got fired from his job and is now living in poverty. From now on, I will start living my new life. I want to live a happy life without regrets this time. Mike and I have been married for three years. Just three years, sort of newlywed, but we have been having bad timing with no kids and there has been a red flag in our relationship. I haven't felt much love from Mike lately. It doesn't mean that I don't love Mike or that I don't like him. I don't have anything against our current relationship. I wonder when was the last time either of us said I love you to each other. Maybe once married, every couple would be like this, I thought, and I gave up on a lovey-dovey relationship like we had before our marriage. At night, when I was cleaning up after dinner, I suddenly realized that Mike was not around. Lately, he's been going out for walks at night quite often it's necessary to exercise after eating, isn't it? It's for my health, he would say. Saying that, he would come home from work and just have dinner. Recently, he's even started eating his dinner outside. I finish washing my dishes for one person in the sink and let out a sigh. Late at night. Mike, you went out again? It's midnight, where did you go? I just stopped to get a drink. I went to the convenience store that's a little far for walking. I'm a grown-up. You don't need to worry about me that much. 
Yeah, but you go out like this almost every night recently. You didn't come back for hours just to go to a convenience store. I'm just concerned a bit as your wife. I'm always worried that you might have had an accident or something. Is that right? Going out at night to buy small things and get refreshed like this. I thought that's normal. I've heard from my married friends. Besides, I'm usually busy with work. I just want a little bit for myself during the day. I think it's natural to feel that way. Okay, if you're safe, I don't mind. But it's dark outside, so please be careful. Please let me know around what time you'll be back from now on. I'm nervous and can't calm down otherwise. Well, then, I'll be in bed. I have to wake up early. Yeah, sorry for not contacting you sooner. I'll have a bite and take a shower after I get home. See you tomorrow, Emily. Yeah, tomorrow, Mike. Thinking out loud. Mike said that, but isn't it weird that he keeps going out at night like this? I wonder if he might be doing something. I don't think he wants to go for a walk or have time alone without any special reason every day. Trying not to be noticed by Mike, who is now at home and taking a shower, I checked his phone left in the living room. There was a message from a woman named Jessica. I was glued to the messages coming in so many times from this woman named Jessica. Their messages seemed intimate, and I can tell there's something going on, so I decided to message her as Mike. I knew it was wrong, but I didn't have any other choice. Late at night. Hi, Mike! We had fun tonight! I'm telling you, you are the best. I've never met a more passionate and cool man like you before. Ah! When I think back to earlier, my body just wants to fly over to you on its own. I love you and miss you already. When can we meet next? I can't wait. It's driving me crazy. Hi, Jessica. Yeah, it was a really great time. I love you too. I'll check my schedule and let you know when we can meet again. Ugh, don't tease me like this. You're so exciting to be with. You're so good at teasing. It's amazing. And that's what I like about you. You're married, but you became so intimate with me. Well, bad boy. If I were your wife, I'd be so jealous that I'd cry. Huh. But I like you very much. People say they're attracted to something thrilling like a roller coaster, right? You want to enjoy a thrilling life too, don't you? We really get along well. Yeah, true. I was attracted to you. I might have been tired of my ordinary life. I had to be a bad boy. Had no choice. <laughs> Lovely, Mike. You really are an honest person. That's one of the things I love about you. Oh, you know what? I have big news for you. Guess what? I'll tell you even if you say no. <laughs> what is it, Jessica? Good news or bad news? Now I'm really curious. What's the news? Of course, very good news. Don't be too surprised, okay? Well, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant with your baby. I just found out this morning. The doctor said it's about two months along. I was so happy. I jumped up and down right in front of him. <laughs> I wanted to tell you earlier, face to face, but I just missed the timing. What? Is that true? Oh, Mike, are you not happy? Didn't you want this to happen? Oh, no, I'm very happy. You just took me by surprise. Sorry, Jessica. I didn't notice at all because you seemed perfectly normal earlier. Oh, good. Sure, I shouldn't have told you such an important thing like this by text. Sorry about that. I should have told you directly, but I was so caught up in our time together that I couldn't bring myself to say it. Don't be, Jessica. I can't believe it. Could this be a dream? A child we love has been born between us. No, it's not. Mike, you wanted kids, right? Poor Mike, not being able to do so with your wife. But now, I can give you what you wanted instead of your wife. Your baby, the one I've been dreaming of. What should we name the baby? How about Maisha? That's your name and my name. It's such a lovely name. Yeah, that's great. The baby's name is lovely, Jessica. You have great taste. Mike? Are you really happy? You don't sound happy. Is there something you're worried about? Oh, I'm fine, Jessica. This is just such great news that I'm not feeling like myself. I've been wanting a child so badly and now my dream has come true. I feel like I'm in a dream. Well, then, you'll be a father. Keep it up, Mike. I'm sure you'll be a wonderful dad, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'll do my best and be an even better dad than you expect. What are you thinking about this child? Of course we will have this child, you and me. I can't wait for us to start living together and think about getting our own home for our future children. It'll be so great. I'm so excited just thinking about it. My wife, Emily, what about her? What are you talking about? You told me that you'll divorce and get together with me, so that's what should happen. But I want that to happen before this child is born. I'm pregnant. I have enough to worry about. 
You need to prepare the divorce papers as soon as possible and have your wife sign them. Procrastinating on this kind of thing is just a hassle. Well, you're right. I'll find time to talk to her later. She fell asleep earlier today and we haven't had much time together lately. Okay, you two are not getting along. Since you don't spend much time together, you don't have much chance to talk. Poor Mike being neglected like that. I would never do such a thing. Mike, I have so many things I want to talk to you about. I would never do something as terrible as neglecting you like your wife does. Exactly. We have different lifestyles. It's rare for us to talk face to face. We don't even eat together anymore. We always message each other. Oh, poor Mike. I can't believe someone would cheat on such a passionate and charming man like you. I just can't believe it. You'll be fine, Mike. Once all this is sorted out with our lovely child and me, everything will be better and sweet. We're almost there. Yeah, Jessica. Thank you for talking to me so much. I can't wait. Me too. Do you want a boy or a girl? I don't want just one or two. I want a lot of children. Well, what about you, Jessica? Of course I want a girl. I want to dress her up and hang out. I can't imagine her feelings during a difficult age. It would be amazing if we could talk about our love together. Yeah, people say it's easier for a woman to take care of a girl. You'll understand a girl's feelings well. Exactly. But with you, I can have a boy. When I can't imagine his feelings, I can always talk with you. Let's raise our children together. It'll be a joint effort between the two of us. <laughs> I'm so excited. My heart feels like it's flying away. Sure. If it is a boy, leave it to me, the dad, Jessica. Me too. I feel like my heart is going to burst with excitement. Then we'll be fine in either case. I can't wait to see our child. I can't wait for another six months or more. Same here, Jessica. I'm really looking forward to it too. Oh, I almost forgot. We can receive child support, right? It's an important thing, so let's confirm it again. Now, what? From who? For who? Come on, you don't remember? From your wife. You told me if I became pregnant, you'd divorce and be able to demand child support. So don't worry about money. You told me. We'll use that money to send our children to good schools and tell them to learn tennis and golf. They'll have a wonderful life. We talked about it together, remember? Can't you remember? Oh, yeah. The whole thing just wiped everything else. And I feel like I'm not functioning. Sorry. That's right. With just my income, it might be difficult to afford a good school. This may be too big news for something to tell you in messages. You're right. And since we've been hanging out recent nights, you may be tired. You're surprisingly unreliable. Huh, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, maybe. I'm not young. Hey, come on. You're older than me, but still young. I'm telling you, you'll be a father. We still want more children, so you can't afford to be tired at night. Huh. <laughs> I know, Jessica, but let's call it a night. I might feel a little sick. It's kind of late. Sure, I'm happy to shut up. I'm sorry, I got carried away by myself. Well then, sleep well, Mike. Good night. You do the same, Jessica. Good night. Let me know when I can see you next. I'm all yours. I hope when I see you, you will bring a big news of your divorce. I'll try. Talk to you later then. Love you, Mike. My love. Yeah, love you, Jessica. The next morning. Mike, you up? Can we talk? I have an important thing to tell you. Yeah, I'm up, getting ready for work. I didn't expect a message from you in the morning. Anything urgent? I have a feeling it's not going to be good news. Can you make it brief? I'm busy. Maybe I should tell you in person, but I need to go to work, so let me just tell you in messages. Actually, last night, I read messages between Jessica and you. Then I pretended to be you and communicated with her. Oh, well, maybe I should tell you in person, but I thought it was because I was drunk, but it was you, Emily. I never dreamed you would do something like that. So what is it? I apologize for sneaking onto your phone and sending messages. I'm sorry, but the relationship between Jessica and you, I can't ignore as your wife. Yesterday's messages were shocking news, and I couldn't just ignore them. Okay, sure. I needed to tell you about it sooner or later. I was determined to get a divorce as soon as she was pregnant. It saved me some trouble. I guess I got lucky. I see. Look, we're not like Jessica and you. We don't have a lovey-dovey relationship. And yet, I can't pretend as if nothing happened to continue our marriage. I wanted to move forward with the conversation, specifically. That's right. I can't do it to us. My feelings are for Jessica already. It's unexpected that you would say that to me. From last night's messages, I kind of got it. There is no room for me to come between you and Jessica. I know your love for me has completely cooled off. Well, thanks. I owe you since I played around and cheated on you. So we both pay you the compensation. I'll tell her myself. Yes, please. 
I want to discuss the amount and other details thoroughly. We are getting divorced, but not feeling anything. It sucks, Emily. Maybe that's just how everyone is. That was us, you know. Don't we feel better to have a starting point and feel refreshed? At least for me, it feels like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I feel so good inside. Yeah, I think I can finally move forward. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to be happy with her. Oh, well, do your best to be passionate and get along with your girlfriend. She seems to be much more talkative than me, so your home will be lively. Next time, send messages to her face, not on your smartphone. Ha ha. That's not like you to make a sarcastic remark. As a final piece of advice, I'll keep it in mind. Thank you. Well, I'll talk to you in detail next week. Goodbye, Emily. Okay, goodbye, Mike. One week later. Hi, Emily. Mike, what's up? I'm busy right now, so please keep it brief. Yeah, listen. I just submitted the compensation for you. So, can you check the amount is correct sometime soon? Oh, thanks. Let me see the banknote from my phone. Well, this is strange. Is something wrong? I did make the transfer, for sure. I just checked, and the amount you promised as compensation is there in full. Okay, good. Oh, are you talking about the compensation from Jessica? Yes, she has not permitted it. Why? You said she would work, right? It's been a week already. What's taking so long? Of course she will. I've also told her to make the transfer as soon as possible. I want us to end up without any troubles. She also wants to resolve the issue quickly. But you know that she's pregnant, and we just got married. Lots of expenses these days. She's also taking leave from her work now. Please understand. You got married already? That's quick. It's so quick, it looks like you filed marriage the same day we file our divorce. Because we're expecting. Before she won't be able to wear a wedding dress with her belly, she wanted a wedding as soon as we could. So, just a couple of days ago, we did it. She's considering things and moving forward. Please understand. Okay, well, I don't care what Jessica thinks. So, what about her compensation? I wonder when she'll transfer the alimony? Oh, yeah, that. She'll pay, but can you wait for a while? It's difficult for her to pay now as a pregnant woman. If you were in her position, you'd understand, right? I don't understand at all. And I don't even want to understand. My only concern is when she will pay the alimony. That's it. Well, will she pay for sure? She will, Emily. Again, I want to end this clean. Nothing left behind. She's feeling the same way. She will definitely pay. Fine. Let me know when she's ready to pay. Okay. Thanks, Emily. It means a lot. I'm praying you'll meet someone wonderful from the bottom of my heart. You're welcome. After several months... Hey! Is it too late? Don't be fooling around. When are you planning to transfer the money? Oh, Jessica, it's been a while. How did you get my number? What's too late? Are you talking to yourself, Jessica? I got it from Mike. You pretended as Mike to message me, so you know everything. Don't play dumb. Transfer it quickly. I pretended to be Mike and messaged you. I apologize, but what are you upset about? You're going to be a mother. Can't you be a little bit more calm? Child support? Why haven't you paid yet? I haven't been able to confirm the transfer for last month and this month yet. You're not planning to just let this slide, are you? Well, I was wondering since we messaged, why do I have to give you the child support? I have no idea of the reason. What are you saying? Mike and I got a child. Of course you pay the child support. What? You? You're just saying things to confuse the issue. What kind of dishonest, deceitful woman are you? Aren't you embarrassed about that? Look, Jessica, please calm down first. Have you done any research on child support? If you're investigating properly, you should realize that you're saying strange things. Shut up already! Are you paying or what? Anyway, it's the ninth month, so just pay now. I want to save some money before the baby's born. Let's say a thousand. Every month until the child becomes a legal adult. You can afford this amount, can't you? Oh, how kind of me to say such a cheap price. Jessica, listen now. Child support is something the birth parent will pay for their children who are separated for reasons like divorce. The baby you carry is you and Mike's. I've got nothing to do with the baby, as I'm not kindred. Do you understand? Huh? That's a lie! Isn't it something you can get from a divorced person if you're pregnant? Mike told me I can get it from you! You're talking nonsense! That is a lie. Mike just wanted children so bad. He wanted to coax you into saying, Don't worry about the money, let's just have a baby. He didn't have that much income. Don't tell me such a lie! I can't believe you! You're a liar! That's enough. Why don't you consult with a lawyer, not Mike? You should be educated for proper knowledge about finance. Bringing in a third party may spare you some embarrassment, don't you think? 
I don't care. Just pay the child support. I'll be in trouble. Mike isn't very supportive. That's your problem, not mine. And I want to tell you, it's too late, Jessica. What? What do you mean? What happened to my compensation? I've waited and never heard a word. Finally, you reached out to me, telling me dumb things. I'll officially demand it through a lawyer. Compensation? What is it? You're just saying meaningless things to confuse me again. What a despicable woman you are. Oh, don't tell me you don't know what it is. No, I don't. What is it? If you don't stop this, I'll report you to the police and have you arrested. Okay, I'll explain everything from the beginning, so listen carefully. Compensation is, well, even though Mike and I were married, you had an affair with him, and because of that, Mike and I got divorced. You with me so far? Yeah, I knew. Mike told me you were married, so yes. Why are you telling me obvious things again? You know that too, since you read our messages. Good. Then, in addition to my decision to getting divorced, I went through a mental distress because of you two. Money to show apologies for these decisions and mental distress, that's the compensation. You and Mike are the ones that have to pay me the money. Mike didn't tell you? He said he talked about this with you. He paid already, and I'm waiting for it from you. When are you going to transfer it to me? I've been waiting for so long. I never knew! That's a lie. There's no such thing. What am I supposed to do? My lawyer will be in touch with you, so you can ask him for details. Maybe you can split the payment if you discuss it. The compensation? How much is it in general? Let's see, like 30000 30000 I can't pay that much. How will I afford it? I'm pregnant and I quit my job. Like I care. This is the price for the inhuman act you did to me. It's not about whether you can pay or not. It's money that you owe me. No, I can't pay because you know I'm pregnant. Mike doesn't hang around the house recently. And there's no money, literally. Are you having fun bullying a pregnant woman? I'm doing my best just to survive. It's been so hard for me to be alone at home. Don't you understand? Look, Jessica, I really don't care how you two are doing. I'm good as long as you do your part. If you can't figure it out on your own, why don't you consult the passionate and attractive him? Can't you reduce the amount just a bit? Like 10,000? No, I can manage 15,000 by installment. Please, Emily, I can't live. Please, for the sake of the baby in my belly. Tell the same thing to a lawyer. I can't help you. This heartless bitch, I can't believe it. You have a good reason to be cheated and divorced. You are like a demon. The man you marry next will be terribly unhappy. Oh, are there no men coming anymore? You are like a demon, having an affair with a married man and having a baby. I'm done here. If you need to contact me, go through a lawyer, please. Goodbye, Jessica. Have a passionate night with a charming Mike tonight. What? Hold on. Please, I still need to talk to you. Tell me what should I do now? I haven't talked with Mike, and you tell me that I can't get child support from you? And on top of that, I have to pay you 30000 of compensation? I don't understand anymore. This is too much. It's too cruel. Will I really be okay with this baby? Hey, tell me. You're responsible for this. It's too late for an abortion. What are you going to do? Doing such a scam-like thing. Emily, please respond. Hey, please don't leave me like this. Please help me. Thereafter. Later on, the lawyer I hired to demand the compensation told me she gave birth to a boy. I heard they named the boy Misha. Such a girly name. Oh, we were talking about the alimony. The compensation was increased to 35000 due to delay without notice, and she leaves her baby behind with her parents. To work like a dog night and day. She was planning to live free with my alimony and Mike's income, but it didn't happen. Well, I don't care at all. Mike is missing, unnoticed. Maybe Mike was the biggest problem after all. I feel a little sorry for Jessica. Mike just told her a bunch of lies and got her pregnant and left her. Jessica's in the process of getting divorced with Mike. And me, when things were rolling to the right direction, I just met someone. And I'm with him. He comes home early at night and eats the food I cook with me. It's a tiny thing, but I think I'm so happy every day. Overcoming what happened with Mike, now I'm getting married to him. I'm preparing for it. Oh, one last thing. I have a baby with my new partner. It's unbelievable how quickly it happened. Maybe the reason I couldn't have a baby with Mike is so that I could meet my new partner.